Hello everyone, this is Caitlin here, and today I will be reading the story of Ruby Bridges by Robert Coles, illustrated by George Ford. Ruby is a great upstander, and she helped change the world for black people and white people. And now we can go to the same schools, but black people still don't have the right freedom and rules. Um, and they're not being treated fairly right now, but she helped put, bring white people and black people together um, and go to the same schools. SB. We still have a lot of work to do, huh? The story of Ruby Bridges. This is a note from Ruby's mother. Our Ruby taught us a lot. She became someone who helped change our country. She was part of history, just like generals and presidents are part of history. They're leaders and so is Ruby. She led us away from hate and she led us nearer to the white folks and the black folks. That's what Ruby Mothers is telling the world. Ruby Bridgers was born in a small cabin near Tyler Town, Mississippi. We were very, 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 very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. We just barely got by. There were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops, so my daddy lost his job, and that's when we had to move. I remember us leaving. I was four, I think. In 1957, the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's father became a janitor. Her mother took care of the children during the day. After they were tucked in bed, Ruby's mother went to work, scrubbing floors in a bank. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. At that time, black children and white children were to separate, went to separate schools in New Orleans. The black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. It wasn't fair, and it was against the nation's law. In 1960, a judge ordered his poor black girls, poor black girls, to go to a white elementary school. Three of the girls were sent to Mc McDonough. McDonough, 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent the first grade in the William Francis Elementary School. William France Elementary School. Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part of an important event in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed to God, Ruby's mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble. And Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold her head up high and be a credit to our own people and a credit to all American people who prayed long and we prayed hard. Looks like she has a younger brother and a younger sister. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the Francis Elementary School. The people carried signs that said they didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. The city and state police did not help Ruby. The White president, Army. The president of the United States. The president of the United States ordered federal marshals to walk with Ruby into the school state big buildings. Marshals carried guns. Every day for weeks that, that turned into months, Ruby experienced that kind of school day. She walked to the Francis, uh, the Francis, Francis school? school, surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair, carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly the first few box, few box. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the street. Then a woman and children shouted at her. They pushed toward her. Marshals kept away, them away from Ruby, threatening to arrest them. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say a word. The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone except for her teacher, Miss Henry. 
There's no other children to accept, to keep Ruby company, to play with and learn with, to eat lunch with. But every day, Ruby went to, into her classroom, into the classroom, with a big smile on her face, ready to get down to business of learning. She was polite, and she worked well at her desk, Miss Henry said. She enjoyed her time to there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or enervated or scared. She seemed as normal and relaxed as any child had ever taught. Truby became learning how to read and write in an empty classroom, an empty building. Sometimes I look at her and wonder how she did it, Miss Henry. How she went by those moms and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. Miss Henry would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and confident. But Ruby kept saying she was doing fine. The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed, and hopefully, if she, and hopefully, or, or, or if she gra gradually begin to wear down, or even decide not that she no longer wanted to go to school. Then one morning, something happened. Miss Henry stood by a window in her class, um, as, as she usually did, watching Ruby walk toward the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped right in front of the mom, howling and screaming people. She stood there, facing them all. Those men, all those men and women, she seemed to be talking to them. Miss Henry saw Ruby's lips moving and wondered what Ruby could be saying. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. The marshals were frightened. They tried to pursue Ruby to move along. They tried to hurry her into school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking and went into school. Into the school. When she went into the classroom, Miss Henry asked her what had happened. Miss Henry told Ruby that she'd been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated. 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 I didn't stop and talk with them, she said. Ruby, I saw you talking, Miss Henry said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. I was praying for them. Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer for the people who hated her. This morning, she forgot until she was ready in the middle of the, ang the angry mob. When school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a few blocks and the crowd was behind her, she, Ruby said she, the prayer she repeated twice a day, before and after school. Please, God, try to give, forgive these people, those people, because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing, so you can forgive them, just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. Afterward. Afterward, later that year, two white boys joined Ruby at the Francis Elementary School. Their parents were tired of seeing the boys get into mischief around the house when they could have been in school and learning. The mob became very angry when the first white students went back to school, but those boys were soon joined by other children. We've been sitting back and letting our children get cheated of an education because some people have tried to take in the law into their own hands, our one parent said. It's time for us to fight for the side of the law and for our children's rights to go to school and get their education. They all did get their education, Ruby and a growing number of boys and girls who went to school with her. By the time Ruby was in second grade, the mobs had get, given up the struggle to scare Ruby and defeat the federal judges. Order that New Orleans schools be Desegregated? Desegregated, so that children of all races might races might be in the same classroom. A year after a year, Ruby went to the school to the Frentis School. She graduated from it, then went on to graduate from high school. Ruby Bridgers is married in a building contractor to a building contractor, and has has four sons. Now a successful businesswoman, she has created the Ruby Bridges Educational Foundation. With his focus in educational, like education, community, and the future of our Mason children, the foundation is specially dedicated to revitalizing, revitalizing, revitalizing the William France School 
which is located in the heart of the Ninth Ward in New Orleans, Ruby is once again stepping to the, forefront, to the forefront and embracing an important an opportunity. opportunity to make history by contributing to the challenge that our nation is race facing and the recovery efforts following Hurricane Cantron. Katrina. Katrina. There is also a special exhibit featuring Ruby's story at all children's at museum. At the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. In Indianapolis. Indiana, Indiana, Indiana called. called the power of children making a difference. Do you know how old Ruby is today? 65. And that's not very long, that long ago that that happened where she was being discriminated against and kids from um, white families and black families didn't go to the same school. And she stepped up and she was an upstander and stood up for the rights of desegregation and making sure that black and white children and children of all colors could be at the same school. We still have a lot of work to do. Thanks for reading with us today. Thanks for reading with us today. Bye-bye.